I'm Gareth Tigwell from the Rochester Institute of Technology and I will be presenting the paper called Emoji Accessibility for Visually Impaired People. This work was done with my collaborators Benjamin Gorman from Bournemouth University and Rachel Menzies from the University of Dundee. And we would like to thank Bournemouth University who provided funding as well as Erin Brady for early support in this project and our participants who without them this research would not have happened. So the main message that we want you to take away from this research project is that we need to change how emoji are used and created to stop barriers in communication. So this is a screenshot of a website called Emoji Tracker. The website is animated and so a green background flashes to indicate when an emoji is used on Twitter and the emoji rankings are updated in real time. So I'm showing this to highlight that emoji are extremely popular. For example, the crying laughing face has been used over 2.7 billion times. That's the one in the top left corner. So there are over 3,000 emoji, and new emoji are approved each year. For example, we now get to send people a boomerang, a plunger, or even a pair of lungs. So lots of people have fun using emoji. But there's evidence that emoji can be confusing. So people can have different interpretations of the meaning of an emoji, such as in this image where a person has misused the crying laughing face. Their intention was to display sadness, but now it's just a bit awkward. I want to make it clear that emoji are just a Unicode character, which means that different platforms can render emoji in different ways. The image here shows very different designs for the same emoji. And this is on an older version of iOS and Android. There have been some improvements over the years, but if you do have an older device, you won't necessarily have access to the updated design. So I want to show another example of the same Unicode character. Does this mean dead or dizzy? Also, speaking of older devices, eventually you won't get access to the new emoji, and so you might experience the issue of seeing boxes, like in this image. So it's all a bit confusing, but we do seem to manage um, it's not like we have to worry about any other confusing aspects of emoji. Or is there? So I'll keep this safe for work, but sometimes emoji are used in ways that they weren't originally intended. So keeping all of what I have said in mind, emoji are actually quite complex. And emoji are a visual language. And the question is, what accessibility challenges are there for visually impaired people? There are 36 million blind people worldwide and also 217 million that have a moderate to severe visual impairment and this is not an insignificant number of people and we do know that emoji are used everywhere as well. So this is a tweet from the last conference that Ben and I attended. It's not uncommon to see people using emoji in this way. So how does this work on a screen reader? Emoji have an alt text, which means that they have an, a text label that is read aloud by a screen reader. And the important information here is lost among the emoji. So it sounds like this. Taco, grinning face with cowboy hat, chili pepper, horse head, taco, party face with a party horn hat and confetti, happy face with hugging hands, chili pepper, grinning face with cowboy hat, running horse, so I only read the first 10 emoji, and we've still not got to the point. So let's see what this actually looks like. It's a confusing mess. So whereas a sighted individual can quickly assess the tweet and pick out the key information, it's not so straightforward for a blind person. So what we did in our research project was conduct an online survey and interviews to understand more about the accessibility barriers related to emoji that are experienced by visually impaired people and in particular screen reader users. But I am saying visually impaired because for the survey we included people with a range of impairments such as impaired color vision so it wasn't just blind people. Perhaps unsurprising but still good to confirm, we found visually impaired people use and encounter emoji in similar patterns to sighted people. 
emoji are often used and encountered daily, and this is more likely to happen outside of a work context. We have a lot of qualitative data, and so at this point I want to remind you that there is a paper that you can download to read for more details. But for this talk, I'm focusing on highlighting some of the challenges our participants experienced. So searching for emoji is hard. In particular, using a screen reader to go through pages of emoji on a keyboard is slow. Participant 4 nicely illustrates this by saying, it was hard to find the one to represent what I mean. Remember that each year more emoji will be added as well to the keyboard. Technology is another challenge. It's possible you might select the wrong emoji because they are all crammed together. So an example of this would be small handheld devices like smartphones, which more and more people are using as their main computing device. Participant 44 said, Sometimes if you misclick an emoji, it might get weird. Like if you send a heart to someone you'd never sent a heart to, and then you have to explain it was an error, which might also get weird. So that can be very awkward for people to experience. Emoji design also caused challenges for participants. They are small and they use subtle color cues that may be missed, or they may have ambiguous designs as I previously demonstrated. So participant 28 said, some emoji are useless or just have a bad design. I was told the prayer emoji is actually a high five. For some participants, context was a challenge when selecting and sending an emoji. There can be alternative meanings within popular culture that are unknown to the individual. I can emphasize this with a quote from participant nine who said, one example is the peach emoji. I've never used it myself, but only recently became aware that it's generally accepted to be a butt. And you can bet I never thought one day I'd be reading a quote like that to an academic audience. So I want to provide some additional insights into the inaccessibility of emoji from our interviews. Again, the paper provides more details, and this talk is kind of just an advert so that you can go and download the paper. From our interviews, we did a thematic analysis, and the first theme is technology as both an enabler and a barrier. So screen readers are crucial for accessing visual content, but sometimes the technology is a problem. So in particular, the next quote refers to two different screen readers. Participant 4 said, Jaws describes this emoji as face with look of triumph, while voiceover describes it as huffing with anger face. And according to my sighted brother, voiceover's description is more accurate. So there's definitely improvement to be made here since different screen readers are influencing different interpretations. The next theme is emoji descriptions can hinder communication. On a screen reader, emoji descriptors are output as speech or braille, and this can sometimes be an issue. Participant two said the labels are okay, though a little too verbose at times. So for complex emoji, this is a problem, and it kind of defeats the point of emoji, which are supposed to quickly convey information. The final theme that we have is use of emoji impacts social interaction. Our participants described how using emoji in conversations could lead to a communication breakdown and social exclusion. For example, poor use in context. Participant 7 said, try listening to cat with heart-shaped eyes, fireworks, sparkles, watermelon, kissing face, flag of Andorra a few times in a row and you get the frustration. So that's certainly an interesting but very confusing message. And I want to leave you with one last quote from the interviews before discussing solutions. Participant 6 said, it's a bit frustrating and depressing. I don't follow many people and it's sad to suddenly be shut out of content or a conversation solely because of a text decoration trend. So this is clearly not an insignificant issue. and We all need to do better and think about our emoji use. So what can you do? I want to give you some of our best practice advice when using emoji. 
so simply reduce the number of emoji you use. Imagine having to listen to each one of all of these emoji, or even having to feel each emoji description with a braille display. So use emoji sparingly. There is a lot going on in this example, but I'll highlight two things. First, you don't want important information hidden away. The username comes after emoji. So for this person, his name is Palm Tree Lizard Oliver Haldens. And the second thing I want to mention is that he's a verified account. And so his content reaches a large audience. And with this, there's a responsibility to provide accessible content. So what can you do? Consider placing decorative emoji at the end of content, and that way it's not a distraction. Emoji are read by screen readers as if they are text. However, you might have a misunderstanding of how emoji present themselves in an alternative form. So this is an emoji for a white cane, and there was a push for disability representation within emoji, which is great. However, the descriptor is actually read aloud as probing cane. And this has caused a lot of upset. What you might think an emoji represents may not be how its um, descriptive text is written. And so as a person sending emoji, don't try and replace words with emoji. Sometimes an emoji can actually have a descriptor that's four or five words long, which means that it's not a simple case of replacing a single word for an emoji, it can overcomplicate the sentence and create confusion. So here's an emoji mosaic. It displays a clever picture in two dimensions. And someone probably felt very proud spending the time to make this. However, this 2D representation is read by a screen reader in a linear way. So from left to right, top to bottom. And that means that this additional meaning from this picture made up from all of these emojis is completely lost. So you need to consider the wider context before using emoji and ensure that the accessibility of your content is evaluated before sending or sharing with others. So I felt that the previous slides were more important since they're something that you can begin to follow to reduce inaccessible messages. But we do also have additional recommendations in the paper and I'm going to give a very quick summary of them here. So first, more care is needed when creating the descriptors of emoji. It's also likely to be valuable for shorter versions of emoji descriptions, since it is unlikely that we can change everyone's behavior in how they use emoji. We need better methods for dealing with unsupported emoji to minimize confusion. So the Unicode Consortium have plans to allow others more freedom in creating non-standardized emoji using Wikidata tagging, which will be an accessibility nightmare. So for instance, a company could design a Triceratops emoji for their messaging app, and it could be identified using the already existing sauropod dinosaur emoji and the Wikidata QID for Triceratops which is Q14384. There are also visual designs that can differ across platforms. And so there really should be um, more input from the Unicode consortium to approve these so that they especially match up with the emoji descriptor. But it is good to see that this has improved in recent years. Emoji selection currently requires a visual search. Emoji keyboards have pages of emoji to go through, which continue to grow as more emoji are added each year. So we're planning to explore an accessibility focused keyboard to support emoji searching. And finally, the Unicode Consortium should diversify their panel in the design process. So the example of the white cane being called a probing cane would not have happened with a blind person's input. So with that, I'll say thank you and please download our paper.